Wow. Wow what? <laughs> what you people do. <laughs> what do we do? Well, that poking around and pouring through those hieroglyphics. You mean troubleshooting? With the schematics and the probe, it's really pretty logical. I'm not doing anything mysterious. Oh, yeah? What about all that knob turning and, and twisting you do with this, uh, this blue thing? You mean my oscilloscope? Oscilla what? Oscilloscope, or just plain scope for short. It lets me see what's going on inside my circuits. It's the most useful and logical tool I've got. Oscilloscope. Catchy name. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a uh, television, isn't it? Television? Oh, you mean the picture tube? Yes. Uh, televisions and oscilloscopes both use picture tubes to show information. But oscilloscopes show measurement instead of soap operas. Oh, then this, uh, this bright line means something. Yeah, right. It means the signal I'm measuring is plus 5 volts DC. Oh, so an oscilla thing is kind of like a voltmeter. Um, close. Oscilloscopes are like voltmeters. Both measure voltage. But voltmeters can only give you a numerical value. Oscilloscopes let you see how things change over time. Change over time? Mm -hmm. uh, how can an uh, oscilloscope change over time? Well. That bright line, or trace, on the screen changes as the voltage of the signal changes. Oscilloscopes show us how much or how little voltage it finds by moving up or down as the signal changes strength or amplitude. Oh, like my stereo gets louder or softer as I turn the volume up or down. Exactly. But in addition to showing us the, the loudness of the change, an oscilloscope shows us how long these changes take. An oscilloscope display is basically a graph. It traces signal strength or amplitude vertically and change over time horizontally. Now, look at this signal. It rises 5 volts in strength and then falls back again. But the shape of the trace also shows that it happens in 18 thousandths of a second. Okay, so an oscilloclock tells the time. <laughs> Not quite. An oscilloscope won't wake you up in the morning like an alarm clock but it can capture and overlay successive windows of time, beginning them at the same trigger or timing point to create a stable picture of the signal. Trigger points, amplitudes, windows, picture tubes. <laughs> this is confusing. <laughs> now, what's so important about an oscilla set anyway? Scope. I, I use an oscilloscope because it helps me do my job. Not only can I make ordinary measurements faster, but with an oscilloscope, I can make special measurements that I can't make with any other electronic instrument. Any event that can be converted into voltage can be measured on an oscilloscope. That's why you see so many oscilloscopes around. Well, I have. Where? Well, um, in most research labs and engineering areas, for example. You know, they're so widely used that Hollywood even sprinkles them around science movies and, and television shows just to add realism. You just may not have recognized them. You've also seen oscilloscopes in schools where, where students use them to study electronics, physics, even biology, and, and vocational skills. Automotive repair shops where they use them to check ignition timing and, and other electronics. Hospitals to show heartbeats and EKGs. Electronic service shops to adjust or troubleshoot TVs, stereos, and, and many other consumer devices. You know. I've even seen them on hobby workbenches. Anywhere there's a need for precise measurement and interpretation. Interpretation? Now, do you mean that those squiggly lines and humps actually tell you something? Well, they can tell you a lot. See, I'm using an oscilloscope now partly because I'm still searching for the problem. Oscilloscopes are really helpful for troubleshooting, for tracing faults or for spotting anything strange in my circuit under test. Oscilloscopes are the x-ray machines of electronics because they show you what's going on inside the device you're testing. Okay, now what did that straight line tell you? That everything was all right. See, that was a power supply voltage. It's not supposed to change. 
but uh, look at this clock pulse. That doesn't look like a clock. <laughs> it looks like a chain of little square bumps. Exactly. Remember that I said an oscilloscope display was kind of a graph. Now this chain of little square bumps is an example of what we call a waveform, a graphic picture of an electrical signal. Now this waveform is what a clock pulse looks like when its amplitude or, or strength is graphed over a period of time. A clock pulse is really a series of digital pulses happening at regular intervals, like the ticking of a clock. Now this kind of shape, square wave is typical of digital electronics. Other typical shapes are sine waves, sawtooth waveform, and, and ramp waveforms. Each is easily recognized from the oscilloscope display. And each waveform has special properties. But although it's sometimes helpful, I, I really don't have to understand it to measure them. <laughs> That's a relief. I thought I was going to have to be a genius to use one of these... Uh... Oscilloscopes? Right. You know, all of these dials and knobs look pretty confusing. No, only at first glance. Oscilloscopes are really very logically laid out. That's logical? Well, it helps to realize that oscilloscopes are made up of several distinct sections and that the controls for each section are grouped together. Looks like one piece to me. Well, what I meant was that different parts of an oscilloscope do different things. And if you remember that the purpose of an oscilloscope is to draw a graph, then those different parts or sections are pretty obvious. Okay, I'll try. Now, let's start with a screen. We need that to see the graph. Hmm? And we see amplitude vertically, so we need an up-down section. And we see time horizontally, so we need a sideways section. That's very good. The first we call the screen or display section. The up and down section we usually call the vertical section. I suppose you call the sideways section the horizontal section. Picky. And it's helpful if you divide the horizontal section into two parts, a time base and a trigger circuit. Time bases and trigger circuits. Mm -hmm. Any other surprises? Well, oscilloscopes are full of surprises. <laughs> but each new wrinkle just adds power and versatility. You know, you're asking me to believe a lot about a little blue box. <laughs> uh, how do these sections make the knobs uh, less confusing? Well, let's examine them section by section. The most obvious feature in the display section is the screen. An oscilloscope uses a cathode ray tube, or CRT, to present information. The CRT forms a beam of electrons, like uh, an electronic pencil, which it can deflect to draw a bright line or a trace on the phosphor-coated screen. To retain the trace of an event that may only happen once, some oscilloscopes use a special CRT to temporarily store the trace on the phosphor. Now, to measure the trace, oscilloscopes include a grid or a graticule that divides the screen into divisions. Now, I suppose that those controls next to the screen are for the display. Right. Right. They include things like trace intensity and focus. Now, what about the next group of knobs and switches? The vertical section. Now, these controls affect the up and down dimensions of our oscilloscope graph. Now, why does it need adjusting? Why can't you just uh, count the divisions in the graticule? That depends. See, this signal is clearly measurable. But what if I connected this circuit? What, you mean this uh, squiggly line? Yeah, don't be too hasty. Ideally, any event that can be converted into a voltage can be graphed and measured with an oscilloscope. But in practice, these voltages can vary tremendously. Now, how can any one instrument graph signals of so many different sizes? The volts per division control. Looks like just another knob to me. Well, take a closer look. Those numbers specify different sensitivities as volts or fractions of volts for every graticule division of height. To measure a change in voltage, we count the divisions vertically and then multiply them by the volts per division setting. Now, what I need to do now is to select a greater sensitivity. So I turn the volts per division and... And the squiggly line becomes a sine wave. Right. Now, how great a voltage range can an oscilloscope handle? Well, it, it varies with different scopes. But by attenuating or reducing some signals and amplifying others, ratios of a million to one are possible and Ratios of 10,000 to 1 are standard. Well, wait, now, why are there two volts per division controls? So I can display two different signals at the same time. You see, often different events are related. And the best way to see what, a, what is going on is to see both of them at the same time. 
Each vertical channel has its own related controls nearby, much like your stereo has special switches to change sources and functions. Okay, but what about the horizontal section? Now, why did you divide it into two parts? And what is a time base? It's almost a contradiction in terms. Well, not really. The horizontal section controls the sideways or time dimensions of our graph that we base our measurements on. Now, the time base sets the time it takes the trace to pass through one division of the graticule. And the trigger circuit determines when the sweep should begin. Sweep? Let's reduce our vertical range. And then slow down the sideways movements of the trace as much as we can. A dot. Right. It's the tip of our electronic pencil. Now, notice that we only see it move or sweep from left to right. Now, the time basis seconds per division control determines how fast the trace sweeps across each division of the graticule. Why is that important? Well, each sweep is like a snapshot. It shows what happened in that slice of time. If we increase our vertical sensitivity, we get a bar. Now, that means that the changes in levels of voltage are happening too fast to be seen in this sweep speed. Now I'll decrease the time per division. Now, the less time per division, the faster the sweep speed, right? Right. Now your eye is overlaying successive sweeps. Now, since this waveform repeats, we can adjust the sweep speed until we get a stable, understandable picture or graph of our voltage changes over time. How can you possibly get a stable picture superimposing that many snapshots? That's the job of the trigger circuit. Snapshots of repetitive waveforms can be perfectly superimposed if each sweep begins at the same relative point. Now, the trigger circuit's controls allow you to select that point or to select a trigger from some outside source. How finely can an oscilloscope slice time? Well, that depends on the scope. Some can graph events over a time ratio of a billion to one or more. Now, the seconds per division control is marked in seconds to microseconds and beyond. Now, to measure the duration of an event, we again count graticule divisions, but this time horizontally, and then multiply them by the seconds per division setting. Hmm. Now, I see this is labeled A and B seconds per division. Now, is this another wrinkle? Remember that we had two vertical channels so that we could compare two different signals. Now, two time bases. Mm -hmm. Now, do you mean this box can look at the two signals at two different sweep speeds? Now, that would mean four traces at once. Or you could use the dual time bases to expand or blow up one tiny part of a complex waveform or to make more precise delayed sweep measurements. I said scopes were versatile tools. Is there anything you can't do with this oscilloscope? Well, different needs require different kinds of oscilloscope features. No one oscilloscope can do everything. Take documentation. If I needed to record my measurements, I could describe it in a journal, photograph the display with an oscilloscope camera, or record the waveform with a digitizing oscilloscope. Digital? Mm -hmm. Like my computer? Now, how would a bunch of ones and zeros help identify a bump? Most of the oscilloscope concepts we've talked about apply just as well to digitizing oscilloscopes as to these standard or analog scopes. But digital oscilloscopes add new features and powers. Um, wait a minute. I'll set one up and I'll show you. There. Now we're seeing the same waveform on the digitizing oscilloscope that we saw on my analog scope. Yeah, it looks the same. Well, it is, and it isn't. Analog oscilloscopes graph the signal under test directly. Each slight change in the amplitude nudges the CRT's electronic pencil, mimicking that change on the screen. But a digitizing oscilloscope first converts the changes to digital values and then graphs those values. How is that an improvement? It sounds like an extra step. Well, it is. But by taking many tiny pictures in time or, or samples, we can do a lot of other things. Now, let's expand it. Uh, little tiny dots. Samples. By making many rapid measurements, a digital scope not only simulates an analog oscilloscope's display, but it can record, process, and transmit information. It can capture a single event and then expand it for examination. It can set display cursors for exact measurement readouts right on the screen. Digitizing oscilloscopes can automate common measurements or use computers to further process and display results. In a measurement or, or test system, 
the digital oscilloscope's cursors and front panel controls could be set and changed by a computer program or a, an operator at a different location. <laughs> you know, I had no idea an oscilloscope could do so many things. I think they're great. It's too bad they're limited to uh, electronics. But anything can be represented electrically. Different kinds of sensors can convert different kinds of energy into voltages. Transducers, for example, convert motion into electrical signals. You can measure the vibration of a mechanical assembly or aftershocks from oil expiration as easily as we check that clock pulse. Oscilloscopes are especially useful because they show you the shape of the event over time. Many physical world applications can only be understood from oscilloscope graphs. Here's another example. Oh, what's this? Hello, hello, hello. Hey, that's my voice. Wow. <laughs> yeah. A microphone is another example of a transducer. It converts sound waves to electricity. Boy, we've really covered a lot of ground. Since I've sampled your voice digitally, I'll send it to the plotter for a hard copy, if you can remember anything I've told you. Okay, uh, let's see. I've seen that an oscilloscope isn't just another pretty blue box. Mm -hmm. It's a widely used measurement instrument. Uh, oscilloscopes draw a graph showing change in signal amplitude over time. I've seen that I can measure amplitude with the uh, volts per division control, uh -huh. and I've seen that I can measure time with the seconds per division control. And I've seen that my voice has a lot more squiggly lines in it than I ever thought humanly possible. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot for showing me what an oscilloscope does. Hey, my pleasure. If you have any other questions, just ask. This is great. Now that I know what an oscilloscope is, let's get busy. Now, where is that probe thingy? Huh.